Hi, you guys. This is another mini lecture on chapter 12 on other ways that populations can evolve. So we've seen directional selection, disruptive selection, stabilizing, sexual, and now we're going to look at mutation, genetic drift, and migration. So other ways that evolution can happen. The first one is mutation. And I'm showing it to you here with these pie graphs, uh, pie charts. So look at, on the, on the left there, you have the allele frequencies. We've talked about those before. Uh, and you have dark blue, light blue, and brown. And they're distributed sort of equally. There's more of the, of the light blue. And let's say by some chance, because this is totally by chance, you get a new mutation. So one genotype of the navy blue that used to be quite blue now mutates and by, by chance, and we get a little yellow ball here. So now when you look at your pie chart, your distribution of your allele frequencies has changed a little bit. So now we've got a little sliver of yellow there. So we have a different trait there that has entered into that population. A new allele has been introduced. So we can say that new genetic variant has appeared. It sort of appeared out of nowhere, right? Out of a random mutation that occurred. And that happens infrequently, but it does happen. What about genetic drift? So go back to our pie graphs here. And let's say you had an allele frequency of, you know, quite distributed sort of equally here between six different types of alleles. And uh, that population lived like that. And all of a sudden, we're calling it a chance event. Some chance event eliminates some of these alleles from this ancestral population. And what used to look like this with all these different alleles in that population has now become much more limited. And here it's showing that they're not totally eliminated, but look at the number 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So very tiny, tiny allele frequencies. So that new population is formed from that remaining subset of genotypes. That is called genetic drift, when some of them are just going to disappear. We're going to have them disappear. So how do they disappear is the next question. So a series of diagrams here that are also in your text are helpful to illustrate this. So if you started out, let's say, with an initial allele frequency of 50-50, and we're going to do it with little marbles. <clears throat> so you have yellow marbles and blue marbles and they were in that big population, which is the jar. Let's say for some reason you picked out a handful of them. So what could this mean? It could mean that they migrated, it moved somewhere, but a group of them then has separated. And that group that separated ended up not being 50-50. You have 7 to 3 is that chance of that new population that drifted. Okay, now let's keep doing that. They're going to form a population, they're going to mate, they're going to have offspring, and that allele frequency is about 70 to 30 because that's the group that started that new population. And let's do it again. Let's say we get a new population from that one. And they are now just mating as a group and not with the ancestral group. And let's say that randomly when you pick them out, you had nine of the yellow balls and only one of the blue. So now that population looks quite different from the initial allele frequency of the initial population. We do that, we continue that. The third jar is a new population that's mating, having offspring, growing, mating, and we keep doing it. May, let's say a sample of that moved somewhere, and now we have something like 10 to 0 by chance. And so now that fourth jar has an allele frequency very different from that original population, what it looked like. So it's by chance that this happens. 
by definition, we're saying genetic drift occurs purely by chance. It's most common in small populations. So can you think of examples where this would happen? You know, when is it that a little group sort of separates and they interbreed and then another group separates? Well, one way is we call it the founder effect, when only a few individuals establish a new population and that allele frequency might change and it's a founder effect. So this is a, a photo of an Amish population. They did that, right? They left Europe, they came to Pennsylvania. It was a group. It's just like taking, grabbing some of those marbles and bringing them to a different place. And now they're not mingling with other populations. It's just a closed group that's intermating. So in the diagram here, lots of colored alleles, but a group of them moves, and that genetic diversity in that population is much smaller. So this happens, genetic drift happens by founder effect, a group branching off. Another example, is a disaster. So what happens if animals, for example, get hunted out almost to extinction and you have that small little group that results from that disaster? And we call that a bottleneck effect. So original cheetah populations um, had a lot of allele diversity and the cheetah population is drastically reduced and we end up with a very limited gene pool or allele frequency. So um, this has happened a lot recently in organisms that have been overhunted. Uh, some of the examples here in California is the northern elephant seal. By 1890s, can you imagine what was left was 20 individuals. So of those 20, can you imagine the diversity was low? So today, we, we've built up those numbers. We've protected those animals. We've built up those numbers. And we have 30,000 individuals. We see them on our coast here, but the genetic variation is low. And that can cause problems because they can't adapt as easily to an environment when they don't have the array of alleles that makes them more adaptable. Uh, other examples of a gene pool to a gene puddle, I'm calling it a puddle because it's so small and limited, are coho salmon here, uh, the otter population that we've protected and is doing a lot better, but they do not have much diversity in their group. And sandhill cranes is another amazing bird that used to be very prevalent around here and is not, not so. Third, what, how else can this happen? Genetic drift. It can also happen through migration. So what if you have these brown rabbits and a population of black rabbits, and they each have their gene pools, they each have their allele frequencies, and then one decides to migrate from one to another. So you've just introduced, possibly, some different alleles into that population. In the pie chart for migration, we start out then with this frequency, which is quite evenly distributed again. And let's say yellow migrate away, they move away. And let's say blue moves away. So the frequency of those left behind will increase, and the frequency of those that migrated drops down considerably. Here we have 0 0.03. 0.04 um, for the frequency of that particular allele. So that's the third way that this genetic um, drift could be happening. We're going to stop there. Thanks.